Welcome everyone. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. So I spend quite a bit of time on GitHub, whether that's reviewing pull requests, issues, digging into different projects, or just whatever. I spend a number of hours on the site just about every single day. But something that I haven't heard about much, and something I haven't played around with until today, is github.dev. This came out relatively recently to when I'm recording this video, right around two and a half months ago. And I'm going to take a look at it today, go through a little tour and try some things out and we'll see what I think about it. Well, I've got one of my repositories on screen now. And apparently if you hit the period key, then it will load up github.dev. So let's do that now. Okay. Hit period. And it looks like it's basically VS Code in a browser. Uh, I do see a little bit different on the left here, but we'll play around with that in a little bit. It opens right up to the Projects README page, and it looks pretty good in this view. Let's just scroll through, make sure there's no obvious visual issues. Interesting that we have a little bit of syntax highlighting in there as well. Overall, not too bad. Now, since we are in the GitHub tab, of this view, we can see we have two different panes, pull requests and issues. Now, one thing that's curious is it says that there's only one open pull request in this project. However, I think it's doing a little bit of filtering because if we check out the actual open pull request, we see that there are two that are currently in the draft state. So it looks like the view that we see here is filtering out draft PRs. Okay, let's dig down into this. We see that we have the first link here saying description. Looks like it gives a little bit more of a minimal view of what we would see on the actual pull request itself. But we have the description, we can see comments, and we can see a little bit of history going back and forth. We can even expand our checks. And let's see what happens if we go into our details. Okay. So with details, it just opens up a page to that particular check. It doesn't keep us within the github.dev editor. On the left, we can also see the files that were modified. So if we go through these now, we can see a nice diff view here. We can actually see the changes side to side with some pretty decent highlighting. One thing that's also nice is it looks like we have the ability to add some inline comments here. So let's try adding a comment now. And we'll just simply click add comment. And if we check on the browser version that updates in real time, now we can see our comment on the pull request. Okay, looks like we can collapse that. Oh, and a little neat note is it looks like we have a little comment icon here on the left, letting us know that we do have a comment in that file. Go through the rest of these. This looks like a pretty sane change, so I can mark that as viewed. And we can move on from this pull request. Now, when it comes to issues, it doesn't look like we can actually view these within github.dev itself. It wants us to open the issue on GitHub. However, it will pop over a description. Looks like it also shows us any labels that are associated with it. And interestingly enough, it's saying that we can start working on the issue and check out a topic branch. That's not really something I want to do right now, so I'll leave that for another day. Okay, moving away from the GitHub tab, let's look at what else we have here. So let's look at the file explorer. We can take a look at some of the files that are part of this repo. And a lot of this is similar to what you would see with VS Code. Now, one thing I do like about this compared to regular GitHub is that it does provide a more consistent interface to what I deal with within VS Code itself, which is my primary editor including the ability to add in some extensions. So I just have two basic extensions, Highlands and Python, which were recommended as soon as I opened a Python file, as well as the very important theme extension so my code can look nice and pretty. Let's say I wanted to make a change to this code base. Well, I certainly don't want to do this on the upstream version of this branch. So let's see if I can switch over to my forked copy. Here we are. Open that editor back up and then start making changes within github.dev itself. 
So the changes I want to make here is adding a socket timeout if one is passed in through the keyword args. So I'll just go ahead and use the editor how I normally would do with VS Code and see if there's any significant differences. Okay, I'm back and I think I've made all the changes that I need to make for this. The one negative thing that I would say is that Pylance had a hard time catching up to the syntax change on this line here. So I had initially written this with keyword args that get timeout and then changed that to the assignment expression so we can keep the value for timeout in here. And it took a bit because it's still hung up on having that colon at the end of the line because we also have that colon as the assignment expression right there. This meant that on the next line, because there was an error, it wasn't able to properly resolve the expected methods for sock. For example, sock dot, and then you have suggestions for set timeout, share, shutdown, etc. Set timeout wasn't an option until Pylance caught up to it, but eventually it did. I'd say maybe 20 or so seconds later. So while that isn't a big deal, it's still less than ideal. So let's see what it takes to get these changes into a pull request. We go over to the source control tab. We see that we have our change files here. We can see the diff for each of those. Those look good. And if we were to stage these changes, Okay, and looking in the message box there, it tells us that we control enter to commit directly to master on GitHub. Well, we won't do that just yet. So once there a quick message here, I typically don't like one line messages, but I don't see a good way to do a multi-line message. So I guess we'll just do a single line. Okay, so I've got a quick message in there. We'll hit commit. All right, now that we've committed those changes, let's see how we can create a pull request within github.dev. Okay, so we're merging changes from our local branch to our upstream branch. That looks good. We have our title from our commit. We can add a little bit more of a description in here. Okay, a little description. We can double check our changes in here. Window resizing looks pretty good. Click through each of these files. Okay. Looks like we can also create that as a draft if we check this box, but I'll create it without being a draft for now and we'll see what happens. Okay. So it looks like it has created our pull request. If we check the actual pull requests in GitHub proper, do a quick refresh of the page, we see our new pull request up here, opened 19 seconds ago. In here, we also see the changes that we made earlier. Moving back to github.dev, we should now see, yep, our new pull request available with the description and all of the file changes in there as well. So all of that looks good. Okay, a final few notes before we wrap up. Uh, one thing that I did notice is that, of course, a terminal is not available in github.dev. Of course, this is a web editor, so it doesn't have that kind of tighter integration with your system in general. It's perfectly fine. We do have a number of potential outputs, which you can play around with. If there were any identified problems, look like they'd come in here as well. And then comments for the workspace. I'm not really sure what this does right now, but maybe that's something that I'll play around with later if I decide to continue using GitHub.dev. Another small annoyance that I've noticed is the difference between searches. So in an actual VS Code session, if we were to search for, say, import logger, all of those search suggestions look good. We see import logger for each of them. However, if you search for import logger here, no results are found. 
it isn't until we start opening files that import logger starts showing up. Now, it does give us a hint here to enable indexing. And it tells us if we were to enable indexing, it would create a copy of the repository in our browser storage to give us better text searches. Otherwise, it's going to use GitHub's text search, which for those of us familiar with GitHub, it's not always the best. Now, just for the sake of this video, I will enable indexing and we'll see what happens. And immediately we see that we do have more results here. We click into each of those. It's what we expect. So to get better searching, you do have to index, which depending on the size of your repository may or may not be a deal breaker for you. So overall, considering all things we've seen today, I think github.dev is actually a pretty good implementation, considering that this is a browser in your editor and it does integrate pretty nicely with GitHub itself. Would I use this as my full-time editor? Absolutely not. However, would I use this to make quick changes to a repository without dealing with the usual GitHub workflow? Potentially, especially if it's small changes that I'm going to commit directly to the repository itself. Creating pull requests was a little bit awkward. Uh, creating commits itself. Again, I'm not a big fan of single line comments. So that kind of deters me from using this to make commits themselves. But overall, considering what this is, I think they've actually done a really good job. But that's my opinion. I'd love to hear what each of you think about this as well. If you've used this before, or if you're planning on using this now that you've watched this video, and if you know any neat tips or tricks associated with github.dev, please leave a comment down below to let me know, and I'll definitely try them out. But until next time, thanks for watching.